Hello and welcome to Lecture 2 from 4052 Online. I hope that you all enjoyed Lecture 1 and I hope that you were able to consider some of the things that we talked about. I know several of you reflected some of your thoughts and feelings, so I appreciated that. And I hope that this week proves to be just as challenging and stimulating and that you are able to take what we learn each week and collaboratively look at the big picture building on the skills that we learn. So. I just wanted to quickly mention on the reflection journals, thank you all for posting and thank you for sharing um, answers to the questions that I included in the last lecture, such as why you chose USF and things like that. Please make sure that if I ask you to do specific things like I did last week, that you include that, but then that you also do your reflection over the material. And some of you did and some of you didn't, and I know that might have been a little confusing. So. Please just make sure that if you are posting something that I specifically ask for, that that is in conjunction with whatever else you thought about from the readings or the lectures or any thoughts or comments that you had based on the week's information. So um, please also post in the question form if you have anything, concerns or questions or thoughts that maybe haven't been addressed yet. And since the assignments later in the semester will be in APA style, I wanted to give you all a link to an APA website that can give you some guidelines. Of course, you can look in the manual, but sometimes it's nice to have an online reference. So that is there for you. It's from liunet.edu, and that actually gives you a pretty good general overview of what APA style is. So I hope that you all find that helpful if you're not used to APA. So this week we are talking about the impact of self-concept and that is a pretty significant topic so we will spend some detail on this idea and of course then that will build into other things that we discuss later in the semester as well. So I'd like you all to ponder this situation. Bob is 35 years old and he's married, has a wife who loves him and supports him. He has lots of friends, he plays softball, he's in a model playing club, so he's active, he's social. However, he believes that others at work perform much better than he does, which creates a low self-concept. So in his mind, at work, other people are far outperforming him and doing much better with him than him at their jobs, and that makes him feel that he is not up to their standards. So on your piece of paper or whatever you happen to have in front of you, um, jot down some ideas you have for how he might improve or enhance his self-esteem. Based on this scenario, I mean, he's you know, 35, mid-30s, he has a wife, um, she is very supportive and loving, so no relational issues in the marriage. Uh, apparently he has friends and doesn't have issues socially either. So actively involved in several social outlets, work is the issue so how can Bob improve or enhance his self-esteem so even if you need to pause this that's fine just jot down some ideas what are, what are your first thoughts as far as what could help him and then once you've done that I'd also like you to consider if your suggestions would be different if Bob was Bobby and I won't elaborate any further on why that's an important question right now but what changes in your mind if you hear that this is Bobby instead? Okay, so that's an activity to kind of get us thinking about what self-concept is, but let's make sure that we define that clearly so that we you know, know exactly what it is and how it works and why it's important. It's a subjective description of who you are. In other words, how do you define yourself? If someone were to say, who are you? How do you describe or interpret who you are as a person? Now, here's a little devil's advocacy, or is it who you think you are? So I guess I'm, I'm throwing the wrench in there because I think that you could argue that a subjective description of who you are is based on your beliefs about yourself. So can we ever fully know who we are, or is it just who we believe or think we are? That's some food for thought because that's pretty deep, I know. <laughs> okay, so there's a self-concept model that I'd like to share with you a little bit. Okay, the first element of that is attitude. So when we are developing a self-concept, 
we have an attitude. It's a learned predisposition to respond to a person, object, or idea in a favorable or unfavorable way. An easy way to say that is what you like or dislike. So you develop an attitude based on your experiences. So, you know, from childhood on, you experience things, you go through things, you observe things, and you decide that in these situations, I have a favorable impression. In these situations, I have an unfavorable impression. Basically, I like this and I do not like this. So that is your personal attitude, which drives your self-concept. Another element is belief. It's the way that you structure your understanding of reality. And an easier way to frame that is what is true or false. And actually, I'm going to give you a short story. When I was in high school, I was in the International Baccalaureate program. And one of our professors taught us philosophy. And the class was theory of knowledge. And basically, it was the idea of how do you learn to think? and what is thinking, and is thinking for thinking's sake enough, and very, very deep, very philosophical, very, um, you know, overwhelming for high schoolers. (laughs) But what's interesting is, I will never forget, he brought up this idea of, you know, how do you know what is truth? Is there ultimate truth? And if so, how do we define what ultimate truth is versus just truth in general. And so he talked about this idea of how truth can be construed as perception. Because I think it's true that the sky is blue based on my learned predispositions and the way I structure my reality, I say the sky is blue. But someone else may have predispositions and understandings of reality that differ from that. So is that to say that my understanding of truth of the sky being blue is wrong because someone else disagrees is their ultimate truth. And so really interesting deep concepts. And so in this specific scenario, the way you structure your understanding of reality, you know, let's not get into the very deep side of it, but it's just truly how do you understand the definitive elements of life. So yes, I believe this. No, I don't believe this. And then finally, values. We develop our self-concept based on our values. They are our they are our enduring concepts of good and bad, right and wrong. So that comes from experiences, from our family, from our culture, from our upbringing. You know, what have we learned is appropriate and not appropriate, or right and wrong, morals, those types of things. And values are more resistant to change. So attitude and belief can be modified a little more easily. Our values are a lot more difficult to change because they're more inherently grown. So that kind of becomes who you are very early on and that makes it a little more difficult to modify. All right, so another activity to kind of develop these skills a little further. On your piece of paper, please consider the question, who am I? And that can be a little too broad. So more specifically, I would like you on 10 different lines on the paper to fill in the blank, I am whatever, 10 times. So you're going to have 10 sentences completing I am what. And at this particular point, um, for some of you, it may be difficult to identify 10 aspects of yourself because once you eliminate the obvious, like, you know, I'm a student, I'm, you know, Um, whatever you do for your job or you know I am a girlfriend a boyfriend whatever you know how do you then define further what are the deeper elements of you and so um, please take the time this is important so please take the time to think about who you are and I am 10 things and you can set this aside for now we will kind of go back to it a little bit later so Have you ever woken up in the morning and you're just having that kind of day and you find yourself thinking or saying, I'm just not myself this morning? What does that mean? That that clearly means we've defined who we think we are. You know, if I'm not myself, well, what is myself normally? This is not myself, so how do I define who I am? There are three main elements of yourself as far as the text is concerned. So let's talk about those quickly. Your material self the total of all tangible things that you own. So your physical body, that is your material self, 
where you live, the things that you own, your possessions, anything that you can claim in a physical way is your material self. And that does define who you are, interestingly enough. And, you know, there are the get rid of your clutter gurus, <laughs> the organizational gurus that will say, you know, your possessions end up possessing you. And so there really is some truth to the idea that the things that you have and the things that you own can really define who you are. So, you know, um, that show hoarders, that in a very extreme way shows that th that is how people define themselves. They can't let go of the connection they have to things. And even our bodies, you know, um, in religious connotations, you know, often the body is referenced as the temple. You know, your body is your temple. And so, you know, who, who you identify yourself with or as, you know, that's important, for even your physical body. Okay, so your social self, another element, part of you that interacts with other people. So the way that you carry on your relationships, the way that you have conversations, the way that you interact on a daily basis with people you're close with and people that you're not close with, that's just the social side of you. Um, and we are all driven by the need to be social beings. And so, you know, there are some of us who are more reserved or shy or less social, but that does not mean that that doesn't help define who we are. It's just we maybe have other areas of ourselves that are more dominant. And then the spiritual self, the internal thoughts about your values, your moral standards, and your beliefs. And the spiritual self can also encompass religion, but it does not have to. Um, spiritual in the side of your internal understanding of right and wrong, what is moral, what is ethical, what you value, what you believe in. And that is more of an internal element. So material self is very external. Social self is interactive and spiritual self is more internal. So there's kind of three dimensions to those different selves. So let's look at those a little further. All right, on your piece of paper, you wrote down your 10 I am statements. So now that we've looked at the dimensions of self, on the bottom half or on the back, if you don't have room, wherever, make three columns. So you'll have your material self column, social self column, spiritual self column. And then I would like you to assign each of the 10 responses that you used to one of the columns at the bottom. So if, if I would have done that, I would have said, I am a mother. So I would assign, I am a mother to social self because that's interaction with another human being, my son. And so go through and assign your 10 I am statements to one of those three categories. And if you need to pause, that's fine. It may take a little bit. And now that you have done that, what have you learned about yourself? Did you just have affirmation that you already know yourself pretty well? You knew that you tend to be a social person or you know that you tend to be a spiritual person or did the ones that you immediately choose at the beginning end up in a category that was a little bit surprising or one that you wouldn't have necessarily defined yourself in? And just as a thought, you may want to keep this for your personal growth presentation because like we discussed in the overview video, your personal growth presentation, which we will get into a lot more in depth as the semester goes on, but the idea of that is it's a journey over the whole semester. And so you may want to do this same activity at the end and include the results of both and look at how you may have grown or changed or modified who you are and your belief about yourself. Okay, so we've looked at self-concept in the definition. We've looked at how we model our self-concept, and then we've looked at the different selves that we may have. But how do we create a self-concept? You know, th there's the idea that part of our experiences and our, you know, things we go through in life create that for us, but we have a personal role in that as well. So how do we create a self-concept, especially if we don't like the one that we have developed at this point? How do we change that? First and foremost, you can argue that it would be through interaction with others. We form a self-concept by internalizing